We can't shake hands because of coronavirus. No, we can't. So we just have to... Okay. All right. <laughs> I think we've already shook hands. We're doomed. <laughs> This is this is super exciting because I actually haven't really done this before. I have a guest on my YouTube. Sometimes I get students to play songs, but it's, mm. they don't talk. I don't let them. They're not allowed. It's probably good. Yeah, because the, if they talk, camera goes off. I'm joking. It's, that's a joke. <laughs> it's going to be actually a completely different vibe because usually it's just me and a camera. It's very stale, but uh, Dan's a great sounding board for my terrible jokes. So... Um, I, I laugh on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Dan is, uh, he plays for Hypno Sex Ray Band. Is it Hypno, Se Hypno, Hypno Sex Ray? Hypno Sex Ray. I don't know why I added band to the end. Um, see, that sounds pretty cheesy when you put it like that, doesn't it? Hypno Sex Ray. The best cramps cover band in the Southern Hemisphere. I would say the world. I've seen them. <laughs> Fantastic. Especially if you like to see a grown man in his underpants. If you don't know who the cramps are this is the point where you pause the video and you go back and search through youtube that's right and check them out and then come back or get the minutes up on the views on this and then go search them <laughs> all right no do, do whatever you like so um so a quick couple of questions um well just just to introduce dan i met dan what oh geez several years ago i found you on youtube you did yeah on youtube yeah yeah there you go youtube brought us together Amazing, and it's brought us together again for this video. <laughs> He's making eyebrows at me. Um, yeah, so actually, and I remember you came to a gig. I was doing a solo gig, yeah, and I was doing my yeah. finger picking and singing sort of thing. Yeah. And yeah, Dan gave me some really good photos, which I used for quite a few gigs. Well, that was bright. It's just flat out bribery. It was. Because I'm a photographer by trade. Very good photographer. But um, so I knew Adrian was going to be there because I was now stalking him on I think on Facebook. Cool. And I really wanted to find a good guitar teacher who was into the same kind of music. So I went to your gig, took lots of pictures, and then said, hey, you can have these if you teach me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was totally cool with that because they were great photos. Yeah, it's, that's how to do it, kids. That's, <laughs> hey, man, that's bartering. You know, it's good. Um, so uh, now Dan, uh, over the years, sort of would work on various things, and then he got into a cramps. He started a cramps cover band. So well, we, I didn't start, but I joined. You joined. Joined yeah. a cramps cover band, and... Um, Dan worked really hard himself, but there were a couple of little riffs and stuff I helped you with, but generally speaking, you were pretty self-driven with that, and you are comfortable to learn most of those riffs. Every now and then, something would come in that was a bit, what's going on here? Mm, the, I think it's a part of the way they record it as well. There's a lot of kind of open strings. There's a lot yeah. of background harmonics and... Some noisy stuff. If it's a you know, big Gretsch with fuzz, there was definitely going to be challenges with that. Mm. Um, but, you know, he'd come in and be like, what's this part? And I'd be like, what do I look like, a guitar teacher? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Suck it up. That's yeah. Yeah, that's what a guitar teacher looks like. <laughs> um, so, when did when do you know when Hypno Sex Ray formed? Oh, oh gosh. Well, uh, you know, um, you can preparing make it up. to preparing to write the band's uh, Wikipedia biography. page. <laughs> no, I, I think it was about six years ago. We've yep. actually been doing this, but it took us the first year. We were so shit that we really we were just about to try to book a gig, and then the drummer we were working with. Uh, needed an operation and was told 18 months recovery no drums yeah so then we had to get another drummer it was like oh. eventually we played a gig probably about 18 months after we decided to do it yep at 2 a.m at yaya's in smith street yep and i don't think i've ever been so nervous yeah 2 a.m yeah right i think it was new year's eve or new year's day technically new year's day yeah right and um, everyone would have been absolutely I was hammered. drenched I was drenched in sweat beforehand yep yeah and totally then, sober because I knew if I had one drink beforehand I'd be a mess yep and I took your advice about drinking as well it's, it's like get on stage with a drink but don't have wait till you start playing yeah yep. yeah yeah never too many I never I always think yeah like a nice strong drink on stage and that's about all you need just to so just yeah so I had a, a, a double whiskey and a, a pint of beer Oh man, yeah, I remember the double whiskey discussion. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, uh, that's don't what. Do that, yeah, kids. don't kids stay away from that. I'm definitely gonna have to make sure I tick the thing that says this is not a video for children. Um, but that's fine. So, um, 
The plan today is that we're going to play uh, a couple of riffs and Dan's going to give you a rough idea of what's happening in them. And by the way, I'm going to have them transcribed on my Patreon page, which which Dan is a member of, actually. It's partially how this conversation came up. Absolute legend. Um, thanks, Dan. Thank you again. So, um, all right, what's first on the menu? Uh, we'll do Goo Goo Mark, yep. which is... Um, uh, basically, it's a cover. The Cramps actually covered a lot of songs. They didn't write fully, completely write a lot of their own songs. A lot of it was lifted. I mean, if they were trying to do what they were doing now, they'd probably get called out. Sued. <laughs> called out. But I think also... There'd be a that, hashtag against them. Yeah, it's that kind of music as well. They were they were actually very respectful. And they, well, if you look at listen to their live gigs, they reference the songs that they're covering yep. as well. And um, because they were mad record collectors. Anyway, Goo Goo Mark. the rundown here so it looks like well I'll let you tell us what's going on in that one well it's very straightforward E and yep. D they're very obviously very close together yep if you play them okay yep. you play them there but it doesn't sound the same does it no it doesn't have that wrong so you play with those open strings and you let the strings ring and I'm lifting my fingers off to let the open strings ring as well yep that's a B. That's kind of a B chord, but I'm just really just muting the E string and playing it a little bit off. It's a little bit dissonant because it's not supposed to have an A. I, I believe, I believe when you lift that up, you're going to get a kind of G chord. Kind of, it's like a G. Not a B, of G course, six. it's a G. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What am I saying? No, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You're thinking, you're thinking up one instead of down one. Anyway, so again, that's a very poison ivy, the guitarist in the cramps, goddess. Uh, she does that a lot. There's a lot of very strings cool. left ringing, even while she's playing a solo. There might be a random sort of background noise going. It's on. always it kind of adds to, adds to yeah. a bit of the flavour, really. And then, but I love. I, it's, for me, it's always about you know whatever you're doing, you got you got to sort of do it, do it. Justice, and you do like just really nice attack, yeah. really convincing. You've picked up her attitude, I think. Yeah, nice. And then for the, um, I guess it's the chorus riff, you call it. Square up to the camera. Yeah, that's it. So I'm playing very close to the bridge there yes, to get more why? treble. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, I started doing that um, because I realised playing live, um, I needed to make... That's that's a softer part, right? Yep. There's less volume. Because if you want to get that nice chord sound with this guitar, you've got to hit them fairly firmly. Yeah, get it And then bit. you go to... exaggerating a bit but you lose so much volume so yeah. if, you, if you pick hard right down near the bridge you kind of get that punchy yeah, yeah. and as long as I suppose you've got reasonably thick strings and you're careful you won't yep. break it yeah. that sounds awesome it's, got that, it's definitely got that twangy almost that spaghetti western kind of punch you know yeah yeah, yeah, so you can make a guitar sound like two guitars, kids. It's cool. Yeah, different sound. And so when you're strumming, you come up here. Yeah, so strumming, I, you know, depending on probably depending on how feeling on how I'm feeling on the on the night. Yeah. <laughs> how um, many double whiskeys yeah. you've had? <laughs> yeah. Which part of the set the song's in, and how much I care. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so to, to even uh, to accentuate that even more, you can soften your strumming. 
So the first part of the song is only the guitar. Yep. Before the uh, rest of the band kicks in. Right, that change in tone is amazing. Though. Yeah, it's, like, it's almost so like you change pick up or something. Alright, so next on the menu was the was the, the Gugumuk solo. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look okay. at that. I'll, I'll do the. Okay, it's just the same. Okay, let's before, see if we can right? do it. Let's see if I can make it. Okay, one, two, three, four. <laughs> So give us a really quick rundown. So we're not going to do a super in-depth lesson on every single yep. note, but what what's your take on that, Dan? What's going on there with that solo? Well, it's basically pentatonic minor. Yep, nice uh, and easy. Basically, yeah. But just it's, it's really nice. It's just a really nice. Yeah, cool. Tuneful. Just square up a little yep. with the camera so they can see, and just give a little. Give a bit more of a close up. Okay, so it's. <laughs> mistake all the time and I'm very quick to uh, accept it when I do. Um, I think that's an important part of learning actually because now next time I do it I'll realize I did it wrong. Okay? It's okay to be wrong. We learn through failure. Yeah, that's right. Also, don't get used to that me making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, we're in a circle, within a circle of trust here. Right? We're, we are in a circle <laughs> of trust. Um, so, next is... Uh, you, you said to me off camera, should we explain what Goo Goo Muck is? No. No. Um, <laughs> look it up yourselves. Yeah. Uh, uh, so at that, home. Yep. And then clear your search history. Yeah, okay. Item three. <laughs> What's inside a girl? Okay, show us the riff. Again, this is, um, I do a bit of bridge picking. Nice. Uh, depending on, you know, those various factors. London. London. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's, it's a bit of a sight to say. I though. can't make really corny <laughs> jokes if no one else is here. Just the camera, because... Yeah, anyway, probably a good thing. Go for <laughs> it. <laughs> song great fun lyrics very tongue-in-cheek yeah very so a bit rude that's basically right. the whole song there's a second section <laughs> Good for alternate picking practice, easy yes. to learn, good to get a, you know, good to practice on and get right. Uh, and like with all these songs, if you can play them with some other people, like a band, yeah, that's when you really start to have some fun. Yeah, and, and that's cool. like mm. that's definitely one of the things here is obviously these parts there we're sort of isolating them, playing it. I find a lot of this, a lot of the because the, the cramps, a lot, a lot of their stuff borderlines on psychobilly, like it's kind of that crazy rockabilly wild yeah. sort of thing. Well, they're credited with inventing the genre, but they sort of didn't really, in fact, they sort of disagreed with that later, later on. Isn't that bizarre? How, which, you know. And they weren't the first people to use the term psychobilly. Yeah, Apparently right. The term had been around for a while. I believe Johnny Cash coined it, talking about a catalogue. 
That's yeah. the story. Well, that's, cool. that's psycho Billy Cadillac, you know. Isn't that crazy? So that's um that's sure. another really cool riff there. Mm. Um that's probably my favourite of the ones you're playing today. I really like that one. That's great. There's, uh, if I can quickly add, there's a nice yeah. chordy break. It's not, not a solo as such. There's, oh, that's uh, where I... Middle. Sorry, I cut you off there before yeah, you really no, want to no. play that. Yeah, go for no, it. No, because it's it's just nice. It's, again, it's, it's... I think it's classic Poison Ivy. It's just... <laughs> A lot of that stuff moves people more than, you know, you know. Yeah, whoever, you know, it's like some people just love that. Yeah. Chords. It's just noise. It's awesome. All right. Cool. So that so that was What's Inside a Girl. Uh, so definitely don't Google that one. And, uh, well, you can Google well, it. Well, let's, let's do Teenage Werewolf then. Teenage Werewolf. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Again, um, a very simple song, fantastic to play. And remember to keep the swing, don't play too fast. Okay. Because we, we were actually found we were playing it a bit too fast, live. Yep. No feel. And then it's like, let's just pull it back a little bit because we want to see the ladies dancing. You want to see the ladies dancing. <laughs> Fair enough too, go for it. Because they'll dance to the slower songs. And then as a bar manager once told me, that's when the guys go to buy drinks. Of course. The venue's happy. Everyone's happy. Gotta play the game. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's um, I Was a Teenage Werewolf, another cover, but of course the Crabs made it their own. Just starts off with guitar. Poison Ivy used a lot of Link Ray. Yeah. Okay. He's, uh, we've got a lot to thank the Ray Man for. Fantastic. It had, it had just it was like that rumble kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, the, I, other, the other thing I do there is, um, and it's become my favourite thing to do ever. Yeah? Oh, yes. Is the, I know you'll have to explain the, the uh, theory behind it if there is any, but it's not a straight E minor, it's not a straight E chord, it is just a muted it's a stacked e5 stacked e a stacked e5 i like to call it that's why they're paying the big bucks <laughs> okay it's a stacked e well this is maybe a little bit more romantic name oh man i like stacked that sounds good <laughs> it's like okay. wow anyway it's a, it's a chord that sends shivers up my spine i never get sick of playing it mm. it's in a couple of quite a, well, it's in quite a few cramp songs it appears yep uh, also in Mule Skinner. Good morning, Captain. Etc. Etc. So what's happening there? What What are we playing? Well, what are we not playing? Well, start with an E chord. Let's just get yeah, uh, jump up, get up there. to the camera. You start with an E chord. You lift your index finger off slightly, so it's still touching the string, and mutes it. The string is still adding a bit of sound to it because it's yep. hitting it. You, the, yep. the pick's hitting it. So, yep. so it sounds different to a proper E minor, which is like this, which is a little dark. It is. It's nice. Yeah. So I, I if you think play it like that. I think basically by taking out that major third, you're just hearing E to B, which is like a fifth. Yeah. And then you're hearing B to E, which is a fourth, and then you're hearing. E to B, which is the fifth again, and then B to E, which is the fourth. It's like two sounds just replicated over the top of each other. Yeah. It kind of sounds bigger for having one less note. I don't know. I've always it's just really that. dramatic. Yeah, it's Isn't huge. It? Uh, 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 I think in. Uh, Nobody ever says you talk rubbish, Adrian. Wait. Now, now I'm <laughs> definitely suspicious. So that's. Um, Can I just do one tiny little yeah, thing I also do? I'm playing what else you got in there? When it goes to the A. Because these chords are just ringing, I like to do it. Oh. It sends another little shiver up the spine. Yeah, that is. Oh. So 
if you don't have a big swing, you would probably actually pull on the neck and get that a little bit. Bigsby tips. When you, if you make an extreme moves, I find if I do that. Uh, on the next chord, or maybe if I'm not even playing the chord, I'll just go like it loosens the strings and put, it helps it stay in tune. Ah, oh, so they're not getting caught. Yeah. Just that is a, brilliant. A little it's extra, like, at least a little extra wiggle. Wiggle it. That is actually. I'm just I'm really a little bit. With that you know, I, I never, I would never have thought of that. This is, see that, people. <laughs> <laughs> You're never done learning, ever. That's brilliant. No, I really like that. What we do is the the most exultant potentate of love. Okay. Give us a look. Great song, great opening riff. Starts off with a massive, um, well, it starts off with a gong. You could do a massive cymbal crash. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, live at the Peppermint Lounge, the Cramps. Yes. <laughs> Funny, but yeah, you're doing really yeah. well. That's a great. I love that riff. Um, so let's can we talk the, about that intro? That very yeah, very it, intro. It, it's that's it's a, about the the picking riff and some chords and that little melody intro um, is about the all the parts to the song. Yep. It appears again later. <laughs> section the middle break we had to do that just an a chord basically eh? yeah. bar chord beautiful that's awesome so that, that I, I remember like i remember when we were sitting sit down looking at that one so that's that so it's basically like an, an a major scale mm. uh and i've got some theory videos that are worth checking out like theory lessons for rockabilly and psychobilly where i talk about if you take your major scale you've got like your one two three four five six seven all right that's your that's where you can work everything out from from your major scale so if we one two three four five six seven eight it's basically a major scale with a flat second Mm. Really, really cool. And isn't that amazing? It's like from a psychobilly rock, swamp rock kind of band, you know, putting that in there and making that sound so cool. All right. Well, that's been that's brilliant. I hope you guys have got something out of that. I'll I'll tab all of these and and put them up on the website. That'll probably take six times longer than the video has taken to make. So uh, this was nice and easy. Um, Maybe we can finish the video with you talking about your gear. What do you reckon? Just as a nice little summary. Sure, sure. Okay. So, uh, um, this, tell us about this Gretsch firstly. It's a beauty. Well, you okay. may notice a similarity here. Yes. And this is Adrian's fault because he was teaching me and I was he'd let me he'd let me play this thing. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> Every after time a few you sessions, you're like, I want one. <laughs> and um, it's a Gretsch 6118. Um, Anniversary. T? Is it T with the trim? Yeah. Because there's one without the trim. Uh, yeah, yeah this comes actually one. with the trim. Looks no. like that. This one came without the trim. Yep. I ended up buying a Bixby for it. So yep. it's a. This is a good old 6118. And this would be a pre Fender one? It's a 2002. So it's around about the time I think they began to be involved with the production. And it's. um. It's it had it had the wrong it had pickups on it I didn't like too much. Yeah. So I got these um, TV Jones Duotrons, which sound great. They've just they've just got a really nice kind of bright. Um, so it's like little bars under the half the strings, and it's meant to separate the tones or something. I don't know. There's some technical sounds explanation, good. but sounds just good. Sounds That's fantastic. the main thing. Fantastic. Um, and, and you know, actually, I remember I saw this guitar at the shop. Remember, and I yeah, and, that's I, and, I, and, I, and I said, dude. You've got to play yeah. this one, it's a beauty, because it reminded me so much of this one, so I figured you'd be happy. Well, you know what, these, these, um, I think there's like extra, a bit of bracing in this one, plus it's got a fairly thick top. This, oh, yeah, okay, you know, so uh, really, 
Does that have the actual? Um, uh, it's just got the. So a quick one. I want to. I'm going to jump in here. This one. So Brian Setzer doesn't like these because he says the top's too thick. But then, on the Fender ones, they brace the heck out of them. So it's like thick top with very little bracing, or solid top mm. and practically no bracing. I, I think these sound great, and I think yeah. too many people are quick to walk past them because they're not a Fender-made one. But the thick top to me sounds fantastic. But I, I really like the rumble from these. So um, well, I I play with a lot of fuzz and yeah. distortion in a lot of these songs, like uh, Human Fly, and um. Just I, fi I find um, I find I can control the feedback, and I end up using the feedback as a sustain. Yeah, and it's just you get it right. That's with awesome. a bit of practice, it's not hard. You get it right. The guitar and the amp have got to get the right volumes, but you can just and and you can just like and you get a little and then it's just like and the audience is like, oh yeah, God, yeah. <laughs> it's it's cool. <laughs> and I think it'd be a bit hard with the thinner top, so I think I think this guitar is perfect mm. for that kind of thing. Um, well, that's uh, you, do you have your your you don't have your pedal set up today that you usually use in the band? No. Um, no. Oh, one more thing, locking tuners. Oh yes. Uh, straight yeah. off eBay. Good Highly recommend locking tuners on all guitars. It's just my thing, but also particularly with these bees and roller bridge. Yeah, that's, that's a great piece of gear. So we'll do a separate little video on the on the on the you had a, you got a little setup at the moment yeah. for your practicing, which is what you bought today. Uh, we'll do another video on that. Okay. But, but that's been awesome. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, Thank you. Like I said, I'll have the stuff from that tabbed out and it'll accompany the video. But essentially, hopefully you've just sat back and enjoyed, you know, half an hour or however long it's been talking, you know, about the cramps and checking out these riffs and making some bad jokes. And if you're in Melbourne, Australia, keep an eye on our Facebook page and come and see us. Yes, go see Hypnosex Ray Band. Hypnosex <laughs> Ray. I'll put, the, I'll put the details in the link anyway. Okay. So thank you very much and uh, we'll see you next time.